is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go into the vocabulary circles. Let's first start off with a circle here, and we have various points that are spread out. Just so that you understand here, with the circle, these points A, B, C, and D are all on the circle. Point P is in the circle, but is not actually the circle itself. So the circle itself is just the curve. Later on, if you were to uh, talk about, say, the area of a circle, you would be talking about the space in between, or rather inside this curve, what is contained. So this region out here would be outside the circle. This would be inside the circle. And then this red part would just be the circle. First term we'll discuss here is radius. The radius is just simply the distance from the center of a circle to any particular point that's on the circle. Here's one example, segment PB. You could draw from point P to C as well, and that would be a radius, or to D, or to A. So PA and PC also work. Diameter is the longest segment that you could draw in any circle. The diameter passes through the center, and what it does is it essentially slices the circle in half it should be noted that the diameter is always twice the length of a radius. So segment AC here would be an example of a diameter. A chord, on the other hand, is kind of like a diameter in a sense. It connects any two points that are on the circle. It doesn't necessarily have to go through the center though like a diameter, as long as it connects two particular points that are on a circle. Segment AB would be an example of a chord. Now, it should be noted that the diameter is also a chord. It is in fact the longest chord in any circle. The radius would not be a chord because only one end point is on the circle. The second end point, in this case point P, is not on the circle, but rather it's inside. So not quite the same. A secant would not be a segment. So all three of these are segments. A secant, on the other hand, is a line. So it's a line that essentially passes through the circle and it passes through the circle at two points. Line BD will be an example of a secant. And note that the hat on top is a little different. We draw a little line on top with two arrows to symbolize that it is a line. A moment ago we talked about this chord here, chord AB. If you had this thing here being just a bar, that would tell us that it is a chord. However, if you had arrows at the ends here, we wouldn't be talking about a chord anymore. We would be talking about a secant instead. So segment AB is an example of a chord. Line AB is an example of a secant. Uh, next term is tangent. A tangent is kind of like a secant in that it does intersect the circle, but whereas a secant intersects a circle at two points, a tangent only intersects at one. This is an example of a tangent. Now you'll note that a tangent is drawn here as a line, but it doesn't have to be a line. It can be a segment, it can be a ray, it doesn't really matter. So if I'm writing segment TD, that's pretty much the same thing as just simply writing line TD with the arrows at the end. Or even if I just have one arrow only, then that would be a ray. So a quick question for you, is this particular segment here tangent? The answer to that would be no. And the reason being is this, even though it only hits at one point, a tangent is never going to enter a circle. Technically, this enters the circle if you were to lengthen it. So if you were to take this segment here and lengthen it, so that if you were to go to the left, we would be fine. But if you go to the right, you'll notice that it now enters the circle and then exits through another point. And because of that, this does not qualify as a tangent. So a tangent has to be so that if you were to lengthen this, it would still only touch at one particular point and it never enters the circle. Okay, that does it for lines and segments. What about arcs? The first thing we'll discuss here is a minor arc. A minor arc is a piece of the circle that extends to less than halfway around. This is an example of a minor arc from A to B. Symbolically, you would write it like this. 
Now hopefully you see many minor arcs. You should see from B to C, from C to D, and also from D back to A. It should be noted that sometimes people do not write just two letters here for the minor arc. In uh, some countries, depending on where you are from and what textbook you are uh, studying from, they may write the minor arc as three letters. You might want to check with your instructor first to see if that is acceptable or not. Some will accept the third letter in between. Just keep in mind though, you would not go beyond three letters. So if we had another point F here, we wouldn't go A, E, F, B. We would just simply go A, E, B or A, F, B. It is actually pointless to put the third letter, or actually the fourth letter, and in this case also pointless to put the third letter. So typically it is written with two letters, the start and the finish. Remember that there are infinitely many points that are on this arc, so it would make no sense to write each and every single one. You need only to have the first and the last. And again, check with your instructor to see if the third letter is acceptable. So that was minor arc. A major arc, on the other hand, differs slightly. Since a minor arc goes less than halfway around, a major arc is going to go more than halfway around. So that would be an example there. And how you would write this would be not just A to D. You wouldn't write that because if you wrote A to D, that would imply that you went the shortest distance possible. So what you would want to do is this. Note a point that it passes through. So from A to D, if it, point, if it passes through point B, you're going to include that when you write it symbolically. So A, B, D works. You could write instead A, C, D as well. That would work. But again, just note that it does not, it is not necessary to write more than three letters. You would have the start for A, the end for D, and then the one in the middle just simply is there to emphasize which direction you went. In this case, we didn't go the shortest direction from A to D. We went the longer way. So major arcs are always written with three letters, whereas a minor arc, not necessarily. So we have less than halfway. We have more than halfway. So this last one will be exactly halfway, and that would be a semicircle. With a semicircle, just keep in note that the diameter will connect from the beginning to the end. Even though it is not drawn in here, you would assume that the diameter would connect from A to C. By the way, we also have another semicircle going the other way. So if you just simply wrote AC, we wouldn't know which one you'd be talking about. Would you be talking about this longer way here or this other way, I can't say longer, they're both equally long. So just like with the major arc where we had the third letter to indicate direction, we would want to do the same thing for semicircle. So in this case, B in the middle works. So ABC. If you went the other way, it would be ADC.